And for those that are saved, we will once again experience the garden. See, when you were outside of the garden, you remember what the Bible says, he said, the day that you eat from the tree of good and evil, you shall what? Surely die. They didn't die, did they? Right away. They did die. They died spiritually. They couldn't have a relationship with God. And if you don't have a relationship with God, then you're outside of the garden. And if you're outside of the garden, you are going to experience pain and hurt and suffering and death. But we're preparing ourselves to get back in the garden because there's a scripture in Revelation. And um, I, I just was just uh, it's somewhere between Revelation 20, 21, 22. It talks about the tree of life is going to be what in the garden. Amen. In the new heaven. Amen. And in the new city, the new Jerusalem, that, that tree, and it's going to be many of those trees. And it says that those, the tree is going to be healing for what? The nations. It's going to be healing for the nations. So if you're not saved, guess what? You're going to always be outside of the garden. So Adam and Eve not only blew it for themselves, but they also blew it for the rest of the human race as well. However, it's not just Adam and Eve who flunked their tests with the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but we all have. There's not a person here that has not done wrong, uh, that has uh, that's done everything right. All of us have sinned. All of us have done things that we know that we shouldn't have done, but we did it anyway. Come on. Amen. See, this is why the Bible says, uh, all men and women have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen? We've all sinned. Come on? Now, if there's one thing that we can all admit to is that we have all, we're, we're just flawed sinners. We're flawed. Okay? We're not perfect. We all have character flaws and imperfections within our personalities. As a result of the sin, sinful nature that we have, we are all born into this world. We, are, we have now all become sinners in the eyes of God. You are a sinner in the eyes of God until you make Christ your personal Savior and Lord. The Bible tells us that there is none of us that, has truly, that is truly righteous and sin-free before the eyes of God the Father. Now, go to the next one. God's original plan for the human race was that we don't sin. That was his original thing. I want you all to understand this, okay? Because like I said, God get blamed for a lot of things. But it, it's not God. It's us. It's us, okay? His original plan for the human race was that we not sin, Okay? His original plan for us was that we would know evil. His original plan for us was that we wouldn't experience pain. We wouldn't experience hardship. We wouldn't experience all of these things. His original plan for us was that we wouldn't experience death. Are y'all with me? And that we would, that, but we would have to obey his covenant that we that we made that we made that we made that that Adam and Eve made that we obeyed if we just do what he tells us to do he'll work things out god speaking to some people because there are some things that you know you're not doing and i'm going to tell you if you keep playing with fire you're going to eventually get burnt you keep swimming in sharky waters eventually a shark going to come and get you Next, he wanted us to, to never taste the fruit of any kind of sin. It was never God's will for you to taste any fruit of sin. Next one. But Adam and Eve set the stage as to, all, as to how all humans react to this initial setup. They could not abide by God's specific commands and instructions. So God is now for us to have a plan B because we messed it up. He gave us everything. 
He gave us everything that we need to make it. Did you hear what I said? He gave us everything that we need to make it. And he said, you blew it. I gave you everything that you need to make it, to be happy, to be fulfilled in life, not to experience pain, not to experience hurt, not to experience death, not to have to go and, 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 and have mistrust. I've given you everything that you needed. But what you do, you took it and you threw it back in my face and you said it's still not good enough. So now God has to come up with a plan B. And thank God there was a plan B. Or else we would have been lost forever as a result of what happened in this story with Adam and Eve. This will now lead us into the next topic. What does it mean to be born again? And I got a lot to cover, so I'm not going to, I'm going to finish these last 15 minutes. But I'm not going to, I think this is going to have to be a third part but what it means to be born again. See, I have to take you to help you to understand why we live the Christian life, where it all started, and why we do what we do. See, because we can talk about being born again, but if we don't know why we need to be born again. See, we, a lot of times we ask the how, the what, but we never ask the why. Okay? And what I'm doing through this, this anointed message, I answered the why for you. Why is there pain? Why is there sickness? Why is there suffering? Why is there hurt? Why is there disappointment? Why is there death? You know, why is there killing? Why is there murder? Why is there violence? It's all because of the curse. Of our disobedience and not following God the way he wants us to. Let me go back to what I said about, you remember when he says about the women? Y'all remember what I said? About he says, hey, your husband's, what? You're going to be his desires, and guess what? And, and what? And, and he shall rule over you. See, we don't like that. And we're we even fighting against that now. I see so many women just fighting against not doing the right thing. And when you do that, guess what? You're Eve. And you messed up. You mess up. Oh, it's quiet. I ain't got no friends now. <laughs> I ain't got no friends. All right, I'm just telling you what the word. Y'all read it. Y'all want me to go back to that scripture? Y'all like, no, Pastor, don't go back to that one. Don't go. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see that one. The women, y'all don't want to see that one. I believe in women's live. I believe that women should be getting equal pay just as men do. Okay? I have no problem with that. But I don't believe that women were created to, you know, you are the weaker vessel. And there are certain things that you shouldn't do. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? I believe in women. I believe that you are our equals. Under, you understand? So I'm not, you know, preaching, you know, you, keep them barefoot and pregnant. Okay, I believe that, but I'm, 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 I'm just saying is you have to understand some God has principles of why this happened. Come on. Of why this happened. Now watch this. Now, this is one of the greatest scriptures in the Bible, in the Old Testament that we never really think about it. Look what it says in Genesis 3.15. Look at this. This is so powerful. And, you, and most of y'all have never interpreted what to see, what to understand what the scripture it says. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Who is he talking about? Satan. He said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Okay? Talking about what? All generations. And but guess who this guess who that seed is referring to? We're gonna see. Everybody say seed. See, it said your seed and her seed. And he said, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now there's some some implication here that we never thought about. And this is referring. God the Father, in this statement, 
was foretelling of Jesus coming to the earth to be crucified for our sins. He was, he was foretelling that his son, think about it. What, 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 what did Satan do to Jesus? He bruised him. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Now look at it. He will bruise your, you shall, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head. Well, no, this is the part. He shall, that means Jesus did, be, defeated Satan, but the second part is he shall bruise your heel. What did he do? He put Jesus what? On a cross. Now watch this. This, this is talking about Jesus. This is talking about Jesus. Amen? Now watch this. Watch this. In this crucifixion, Jesus would defeat Satan and any strongholds that he has on people. Now this is what God meant when he said that Jesus will bruise his head. He said he's going to bruise your head, Satan. Now Satan was defeated once and for all at the cross. However, God also stated that Satan would bruise the heel of Jesus, which occurred when he was crucified. See, due to the position and weight of the human body when crucified, the heels are bruised. Because you're doing what? You're constantly what? Pushing up. Why do you think they broke the legs? Because you were trying to push up to do what? To gasp for air. Okay? Now, which is exactly what happened to Jesus when he was crucified. Now, I need y'all to understand this because I'm giving you some revelations of some things that you probably just even think about. When you read, Jesus was in the beginning. How do I know he was in the beginning? Because even the New Testament said, it said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. We beheld his glory. Amen? Now, watch this, watch this, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ending this here. It's, it's just a lot I got to give you to help you to understand, because I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think a lot of church people have really had a clear presentation of what it means to be saved and why you need to be saved. And now I'm giving you this. And, and don't forget these sermons that I feel that from time to time they go out on Facebook. Uh, last week's sermon, one, two, three, four, I broke it up into four parts. So you need to share it with somebody else so that they can hear those four parts about, uh, about things. And then I'll send this out as an email to some people that I really feel that need to hear this and then those that were not here, I will send this out because I really do believe that this is important that you understand what your salvation is all about. So we, you know, you will get it. Brother Will records those and uh, then he sent them to me and then I, I break them up. But it's important that you see this. Okay, so let me get to this part and I'm going to stop. Let me get to this part. Satan had no idea what God the Father was talking about when he made that prophetic statement. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between you and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his head. He had no idea that God was implementing plan B. He had no idea. Amen? See, if we have known what the Christian Christian was really all about, he would have never allowed it to occur. If the devil knew, man, if I crucify Jesus, this is going to buy him back. Satan, was, he would have been running. Leave Jesus alone. Don't touch him. You see, the Bible tells us that the death and crucifixion of Jesus would remove a mystery into the entire world until after we had been completed. Now, let me say this. This is just a sidebar very quickly. Why do we take communion? Because I often say, because Jesus tells us to do it, right? He said, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. He said, you're proclaiming my death, what? Until I come. Now, remember this. He said, you're proclaiming my death. Now, I want you to go back to Exodus. And you'll see, and I'm not going to give you the scripture, where it talks about the Passover lamb. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, and God told Moses to say, if you don't let my people go, I'm going to send a death angel, and all the firstborn in e 